One of the uh, experiments that are brought up on board the orbital Cygnus vehicle that the crew is now unloading is the uh, Dove experiments, the satellite uh, project that uh, is going to be demonstrating some new technology. And we have uh, joining us remotely Chris Bosshausen, who's going to be telling us a little bit about that experiment. Thanks so much for joining us, Chris. Hi, Brandy. So tell us a little bit about the Dove project. What is it and, and what exactly is your involvement in it? So um, I work at Planet Labs, and Planet Labs is a company that's trying to provide frequent images of the entire Earth. And so our ultimate goal is to launch 100 um, very large uh, cameras in space in CubeSats and provide um, high-frequency, um, updated, high-resolution maps of the Earth. And so on the um, Cygnus, we actually launched 28 of these cameras uh, to run a number of experiments um, and to test them out in 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 a fairly low orbit um, and get used to running large numbers of satellites in space. That sounds like a, an, an ambitious project. Can you tell us a little bit about the satellites, what their capabilities are, what they're meant to do? Yeah, so each satellite is called a Dove, and uh, we picked that name because um, we really wanted to, to, you know, represent the amazing use cases we think we could have for our data, like, you know, um, just helping life and, you know, humanity on Earth and helping our ecosystem and understanding what we're doing to our planet. So the Dove satellites are um, about 30 centimeters by 10 by 10 centimeters or about 12 by 4 by 4 inches, so a standard 3U CubeSat. Um, they have almost, I guess, 80% of the volume inside is a giant telescope. And so we wanted the, to fit the biggest telescope we could in a CubeSat. And then uh, we have all of the other things that a satellite needs, like a control system, radios, storage, and reaction wheels for moving the satellite around. And all of these are meant to be taking photos of the Earth for, for how long? So um, the ones that we've, we're putting in higher orbits, we actually plan to have um, operational for a couple of years and provide continuous coverage. Um, the Nanorex orbit that, that we go into from the space station um, is a little lower, and so the satellites will last somewhere between you know five to seven months on average. And how? And I think this is not the first um, flock that you've put into orbit. How how how's your other flock fared? And uh, can you tell us any minute? anything about the results from it? So great, yeah, so um, we actually launched two so far. And so the um, first one was on a previous Antares flight. Um, and uh, that almost all of those satellites in orbit, two of them have deorbited now. And so the ones we have now are the replacements for those. Um, and so those were um, taken onto the station and then um, the astronaut Koichi Wakata was kind enough to spend a lot of hours um, assembling together the large dis dispenser packs you see in these images. Um, and then the satellites were taken out of the hatch and um, ejected into space over about a one-month period. Um, so, you know, one of the cool things about launching from the space station is normally when you're on a rocket, everything happens so quickly and there's no live video. No one ever sees their satellites. And so we're really privileged that we're able to get these really amazing high-res pictures of our satellites in space. It's a rare and, and um, you know, fascinating opportunity and the pictures look so good. I remember seeing some of the video of, of those satellites launching, and it was exciting to see. So how does this new round um, add to what you've already done? What, what does it bring to the project? So one of the things we're trying to do at Planet Labs is, um, is sort of redo how um, system engineering is done on spacecraft. So if you think about it, system engineering was more or less sort of codified as, an, as a discipline around the time of Apollo. And a lot of the rules that, that I used to use when I was at NASA and other places haven't been updated in a while. So meanwhile, this entire industry of software was born um, that has completely different approaches to solving problems. So we've tried to build satellites as if they were software. And so what we have on um, this next flock are bug fixes and feature updates. And so we have things we've added. And from the lessons we learned from the first flock, we we're able to you know, roll out about 200 small changes, which we call bugs. So bug fixes. How exactly did you get hooked up with uh, the Cygnus cargo craft? Is has that been a good partnership for you? Oh, it's it's been amazing. The folks at Orbital have been very kind, and um, one of the interesting things about running a hardware company like Software is you um, you want to release as late as possible because you still might have bugs. And so the folks at Orbital have been very receptive to to late delivery, as have um, our NASA partners. But I think the the real key to this has been Nanorax, who have provided the service for us to get access to, to space in this way. And, um, you know, the, the amount of sort of things that you have to take into consideration when you're launching on a manned, to a manned space station is huge. 
and Nanorax do a splendid job really helping us work through those processes and make sure that what we're delivering is, is safe for the astronauts to handle. So we wouldn't be in space without in this way without Nanorax. Well, I'm glad you are in space. Uh, what's, what's the next step for you? What happens after this? So while we, with the birth, um, the, the, the capsule, Cygnus capsule birth of the station this morning, or yesterday, and the hatch is opened, I guess, as you just said. Um, so we, we can't wait to, to see um, our satellites pulled out of cargo and, and um, starting to be assembled. And then like on the previous Flock 1A, um, you know, they will go out into space and um, we'll probably have a small, you know, launch viewing party here. And um, I've never seen so many engineers scream when they see a, a satellite actually spit out of the space station and, and float off into space. So um, that, I guess, is going to take about two weeks. And so that gives us a little more time to prepare for the first orbits around the Earth. Um, so we're setting up our ground stations now uh, for, for contact with the satellites in about two weeks. All right, we'll be watching here as well. We can't wait to see that. That again was Chris Bosshausen, uh, the co-founder of Planet Labs, which has uh, sent up a new fleet of satellites uh, that's going to be launched from the space station soon. Thanks again for joining us, Chris. Thanks, Randy.